Hi, there. Welcome to Banana World, you get a quick god. I need to take it anywhere you can say. Child music is a work of art that has the ability to join to past stories and on to reverberate with the feelings of endless audience members. Yet underneath its harmonies and tunes lie stories of battle, portrayal, and acknowledgement of what happens when an exemplary melody repeats dreams. Furthermore, despair is taken back to the spotlight by another craftsman, and consider the possibility that this account change uncovers further additional disrupting insights about the music business, such as the tale of Tracy Chapman's Notorious Quick Vehicles 2023. Resurgence and the discussions it started. I don't think anybody expected a record from an independent vocalist and lyricist to, um... Gotten in the manner that my most memorable record was before her ascent to distinction, the music business scene was immensely unique, overwhelmed by pop ditties, rock songs of praise, and the expanding universe of hip bounce. In the midst of this setting, Tracy Chapman arose, carrying with her a crude legitimacy that was both reviving and progressive, brought into the world in Cleveland, Ohio. Chapman's initial life was set apart by difficulties that would later become focal subjects in her music. During her childhood in a troublesome neighborhood, she saw firsthand the issues of destitution, racial separation, and social foul play. Besides, these encounters molded her perspective, imparting in her a profound feeling of sympathy and a deep yearning to have an effect. Strangely, her enthusiasm for civil rights was not simply restricted to her verses, even as an understudy at Extremes College, Chapman was effectively engaged with social makes, loaning her voice to fights and get-togethers. This obligation to activism was a sign of her personality, showing a profundity that went past her music as Chapman got comfortable with herself as a craftsman. She embraced a people rock. Style drawing inspiration from legends like Bounce Dylan and Joan Baez her music was portrayed by its effortlessness, both concerning instrumentation and verses. At this point, it was this very straightforwardness that made her stand apart. Chapman had an uncanny capacity to distill complex social issues into engaging accounts, catching the essence of the human involvement with the late. ADS, when a large part of the music business was driven by charm and fabulousness. Chapman's crude and unfiltered approach was a glaring difference. Her presentation collection, Tracy Chapman delivered in 1988, was a demonstration of her one-of-a-kind style, like discussing an upset child, could I at any point hold you, reverberated with crowds overall for their melodic magnificence as well as for the strong messages they passed on, furthermore. While numerous craftsmen of the time were inclined vigorously towards special strategies, Chapman's ascent was more natural. Verbal exchange played a critical role in her developing prominence. Fans were attracted to her certified nature and her capacity to pass significant feelings without turning to vain behaviors. Chapman's breakout track and quick vehicle from her presentation collection epitomized her embodiment completely to the tune A Powerful Story of Dreams, Yearnings, and the unforgiving real factors of life evoked an emotional response from audience members. Its account was general discussing the human craving for a superior life and the difficulties that frequently hold up traffic. The melody's prosperity was a demonstration of Chapman's masterfulness, and it was widely praised. What's more, loved by fans, it didn't accomplish the sought-after number one spot on the outlines upon its underlying delivery. This oversight in numerous ways foreshadowed the difficulties Chapman would face in her profession. Regardless of her evident ability and the profundity of her music, the business frequently appeared to be ill-equipped or maybe reluctant to give her the acknowledgement she merited as the Years advanced, the vocalist kept on delivering soul-blending music, never thinking twice about her qualities or her obligation to civil rights tunes, like Convince Me, and the commitment further cemented her place as a melodic symbol displayed confronting her development as a craftsman, the immense region of down-home music with its ditties repeating love catastrophe and the Southern. Lifestyle has for quite some time been a dearest type in America anyway. The countenances and voices addressing this sort have generally been white. This racial gap is definitely not a simple happenstance. However, it is established in a complicated history of rejection and social allotment. 
Down-home music intriguingly owes a lot of its beginnings to dark performers. The banjo, a staple instrument in the country. Tune T has its underlying foundations in Africa. Early dark performers played a mix of African rhythms with Western tunes on ranches, impacting what might later become known as down-home music. Yet after some time as bluegrass music was marketed, the dark impact was eclipsed with white countenances turning into the dominant portrayal. Besides the Grand Ole Opry, a week-after-week -week bluegrass music stage, show in Nashville, Tennessee started during the 1920s and assumed a critical role in molding down home music's personality, while the Opry displayed various gifts and solidified Nashville's status as the bluegrass music capital dark specialists were prominently missing. From its stage for a long time, this non-attendance was an impression of the more extensive racial elements of America at the time. It was only after 1993, long after the development of social liberties, that the excellent OOP welcomed its most memorable dark part. Deford Bailey to play out this late affirmation was an unmistakable sign of the profound edited predispositions that actually persevered in the business. The difficulties for dark craftsmen didn't stop at a simple portrayal. The people who did advancement face pigeonholing frequently, pushed to take on a style that adjusted more to R&B or blues than country. This generalizing wasn't simply prohibitive, yet additionally denied dark specialists the opportunity to grasp their flexibility and genuine enthusiasm for down-home music. As the years advanced, a small bunch of dark craftsmen like Charlie Pride and Darius Rucker made huge advances into the down-home music scene. Their prosperity was outstanding for their excellent ability, as well as for the boundaries they needed to conquer. Discussions with these craftsmen frequently uncovered stories of behind-the-scenes segregation radio broadcasts, declining to play their tunes and a steady sensation of being the other in a space they cherished. Furthermore, for people of color in bluegrass music, the excursion was significantly more. Testing the crossing points of race and orientation implied they confronted a two-sided deal of predispositions. Their voices, frequently rich with feeling and passing, were eclipsed by industry inclinations that leaned towards white female craftsmen. This fundamental inclination implied that numerous capable dark female specialists were avoided with regard to standard stories. Their commitments were just recognized in specialty circles. Scenery that Tracy Chapman's quick vehicle arose while her unique melody was not stringently a country number. Its subjects of desire, yearning, and break resounded profoundly with down-home music's ethos. Yet as pre-recently featured, the tune, in spite of its worldwide praise, didn't beat out. Everyone else until Luke Brushes, a white craftsman, covered it. This episode wasn't simply an impression of Chapman's process, however, was meaningful of the more extensive battles of dark specialists in down-home music. It uncovered the fundamental predispositions that persevered, bringing up awkward issues about portrayal apportionment and the genuine quintessence of bluegrass music. We as a whole realize music isn't simply a type of diversion. It's an impression of society's culture and the individual excursions of the craftsmen. For some, their specialty is profoundly entwined with their character and their work turns into a stage to communicate challenges or commend parts of their lives. Tracy Chapman is one such craftsman whose valuable encounters fundamentally impacted her music. Curiously, the complexities of Chapman's personality rise above her being a dark craftsman. Her way of life as a lesbian adds one more layer to the Intricacy, the diversity of race and sexuality implies that Chapman wasn't simply facing one conflict against race bigotry in the business, but at the same time was standing up to generalizations, predispositions, and biases connected with her sexuality in the moderate background of the down-home music scene and its target fans. El Gub 2, in addition to portrayal, have forever been trying while the actual class talks about adoration. Misfortune and narrating the stories have transcendently been hetero. The subject seldom wandered into the domains of eccentric love or the novel difficulties looked at by the LGB key, in addition to the local area. This non-appearance is advising and directs towards a hesitance towards broadening accounts, even in a developing world. Public zeroing in basically on her music, yet the media and the general population frequently feel qualified for everything about a big name's life. The hypothesis around her sexuality started right off the bat in her profession, 
with murmurs, insinuations, and frequently interruptions, into her confidential life while the vocalist decided to stay private. The theory was many times more about open interest than regarding her. Individual decisions. The steady examination caused significant damage. Each tune in each verse was analyzed for hints about her sexuality. Was she talking about a lady? Was that melody an impression of her approaching such seemingly innocent inquiries? Chapman's arrangement turned into one more device for the business to minimize her. A couple of times her sexuality turned into an idea. It wasn't in a celebratory or strong tone, yet was utilized as a way to typecast her, further distancing her in an industry currently impervious to her race. It's quite important to include the more extensive scene of El Guitu in addition to the portrayal. In the music business during Chapman's time, the last part of the 80s and mid-90s were not especially inviting to straightforwardly strange specialists. While there were some similar to Elton John and George Michael, their processes were full of difficulties, public hypotheses, and profession suggestions for age. 